Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and welcome back to another episode of our touring Battleship New Jersey with Ryan Szymanski. So, in this episode we're going deep down inside the turret and we're going up into the turret. So, we're we're doing the turret in the barbette. Uh, so we got a, a lot of good video for you guys. Uh, again, couldn't thank you guys more for all of the support you guys have shown me. Uh, again, this video would not even be possible if it wasn't for you guys watching and those who have supported who were uh, shown on the video. And a special thank you to Ryan Szymanski and Battleship New, New Jersey Museum uh, for letting us come out and do this. So remember, if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always... I will see you in the next video. Teflon and coating the inside of the barrel. And that meant that uh, functionally the guns could last forever at that point. It's like that they mounted it out to like 12,000 shots you could get out of the stuff. It's not that, it just wears down the rifling on the barrel so they have to re rifle it. Well, so they just shoot, it's just without the right. rifling, the shell goes. Wherever it wants. Dispersion in the game. There you go, you can tell him. Like, you shot your gun. Back that's, that's, that's what's what going to happen to your missing. Iowa. Yeah. That's what I need to do. From now on, I'm just going to tell him when I have a bad shot, I'll be like, oh, we need to swap barrels. <laughs> we'll go ahead and climb up into turret number one. Nice. That's where we'll go next. Once more into the breach. Okay, that's a weird feeling. This ain't too bad. Carolina was actually a lot more crowded inside the gun turret. Our gun turrets would be, except for this one. I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. This one doesn't have the outdoor range finder on you. I don't think Dad's coming in. No, I think he's sitting there. out there. So, as designed, all three turrets had a range finder in them. That's what should be sticking out there and not on this gray base. Um, so that, that's why it's less crowded in here than on North Carolina. That's why, yeah. um, The aft two range finders, turret two and turret three, were just straight optical. This one had some night vision capability, and the Navy decided in the 50s, uh, you know what, we don't want to keep two types of range finders in the inventory, and radar has made the night vision one completely obsolete. obsolete. And this one keeps shipping water. And obviously you don't want water inside your gun turrets. So they said, just take it out, plate that over, and call the day. Gotcha. So for a 16-inch gun turret like this, you're supposed to have about 80 guys. There would be about 30 up here in the gun house, and the other 50 in the lower five stories of the structure. We're, we're gonna go through that in a minute. But uh, this part is the turret officer's booth. And then there's three separate gun pits. The older battleships, all the guns elevate and fire together because they're all on one uh, elevating mechanism. For the Iowas, they decided to do them all in uh, their own individual gun houses. Um, and so they each had their own motor, and it, it's much better for shore bombardment. So that's what you're seeing here. And there's also some amount of subdivision that it one gets damaged, the rest might still work. So, that like kind of hatch on the wall that has the piston, that's where the shell will kind of come out and the powder effects, or? The shell comes up straight. Now, okay. now, if they're in there firing and everything, right? All the doors are locked? Yes. Okay. Yeah, during general quarters, everything is shut down. Gotcha. So, the shell comes up vertically like that, falls open, that's how the shell goes down. And then this gray pipe is actually the rammer. 
So that, that seat over there with the lever on it is how you ram the shell in and then retract it. And then that door with the piston opens and the powder comes out three bags at a time. Okay. And then you ram that all in, and retract it, slip over close here. the breach. And you put in this little 30 caliber blank and that's what sets it all off. There you have it. That's six bags, right? Is that like from the uh, historical documentary Under Siege? Correct. In the documentary Under Siege, you're using six 110 pound powder bags just like on this show. Now, where, where are they actually, where are they filmed them like actually aiming at somebody? Is that just all meta or is that actually more of like where they fired the guns? Or I mean where the actual trick went to. I've seen some other documentaries where, no, that's not how it all works. It's a lot a bit more of a process yep. than that. They still work. Uh, so Under Siege was actually filmed on the battleship Alabama, not on Missouri. So it's a little bit different. And uh, they sort of cut out some of the steps, but you can fire these guns locally using the, the periscope like they sort of show in the movie. This is a Mark III range keeper, so we could plot our own fire control solutions on this without having to go through the whole um, fire control computer down below. So from, also from here, so they can show all the elevation of the gun barrels and turn the turrets, or is that somewhere else? Um, either. Either. We, we've got controls on each side where you can control elevation and rotation from in here, or the guns can be more or less slave to the range finders, and when they point at a target, the guns just automatically come around with it. Muzzle uh, velocity, uh, feet per second. Was it always a broadside sound, or did they ever, at any time, like, shoot over the bow, or, like, the tape over the bow? Got the 40 millimeters, the 3 inch, 5 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch. Is that six inch guns? Well, no, this is, no, this is yeah, this is like this gets put on different ships, so you gotta so you got each so we've got five inch guns, we've got sixteen inch guns, we had forty millimeter guns. And you could calculate your muzzle velocity. Uh, but that's just to test stuff. When they actually did that in combat in nineteen fifty one, they destroyed a forty millimeter gun top on the deck and uh, damaged some other things. They did more damage to the ship than she'd actually taken from the six inch shell that the North Koreans had fired at her. Oh yeah, was, is that just because of like, the blast or like... Yeah, just, just the, the blast alone. The overpressure from the blast just crushed the, the steel for the gun tub and, and blew stuff right off the superstructure. That would be nice to see. <laughs> so the captain wasn't too happy about that. Well, he, he'd taken a hit, so immediately turning the, the guns for the over-the-shoulder shoot instead of waiting to build up steam and come around uh, made sense to him. But typically, you would never do what you do in World of Warships, going bow on and firing. Right. <laughs> but it does keep you safer because we all know what happens when you go broadside on in an island. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, does not end well. I'm pretty sure that bug is on the bottom. Is, I mean, like, is, is that a uh, signal you think? Uh, World of Warships does have uh, a proliferation of very powerful battleships that didn't actually exist in the real world. So the Iowas have a lot more to fear there than they actually did. Yeah. I, I feel like in your video where you talked about the Tillmans, you were directly shooting shots at uh, World Warships. I didn't realize they put a Tillman in the game. No, they didn't, but like the way you were like, yeah, and they have a few games that want to like, put out paper battleships. Like, I don't think this would be a good one. I'm a huge fan of paper battleships. I love me a Lexington-class battle cruiser, but uh, the, the Tillmans are a little bit too uh, gigantic. <laughs> well, let's uh, head back out. They were slightly over-optimized, right? Yeah. Just, uh, it looks like one of my ships. We'll stop there next. Yeah, just drizzle. It'll be fine. Yeah, so 610 pound powder bags. And we've got two different main types of shells that the ship would have carried. This is the small one, the high capacity round. 1900 pounds explodes on impact. So great for unarmored targets like 
that stuff over there. There's a six foot tall, 2,700 pound armor piercing projectile, and that's what you'd shoot at the other battleships. So HE and then BP? Yep, exactly. Although the Navy called them HC, high capacity. I have no idea why they differed from the Army uh, high explosives, because it's the same thing. Because they got to be different. Yeah. Army and Navy are nothing alike, right? And then the Air Force has to chime in. Everybody's got to be different. What's up, Air Force? Now everybody just makes fun of the Space Force. <laughs> We're going to go through that door right there. Uh, they actually that was had the old warships. <laughs> they actually had a space a space event. No kidding. Uh, I think the battleship was the grosser car first thing. Yeah, the best part was they were still at a wa they still had a water line. <laughs> That new ship smell, right? I want to say new ship smell. Sure it is. It's all being rebuilt. Indeed. So, is this for shells or is this for powder? That's powder. Exactly. You can fit three of the bags in there, and that's for how you would transfer them. And uh, they'd even be stored in the magazines like that, as you will see shortly. Yeah, it keeps them out of the elements. And we have. You don't want your powder getting into. Repair lockers and a flight crash locker. This is one of them. Oh. Oxygen All right. Hi right, guys. How's it going? Hi. So they probably used this on Iowa when the turret exploded. So on the other side of the space is a uh, water cooler you can get a drink from, awesome. and the uh, male head oh, is me? right through there. Okay. I'm gonna go get a drink. We'll take a five minute refresher here and then. Hey, Jeff. Hey. Look, there's the aerial battleship, New Jersey. You're actually wearing a little shirt today. It's kind of crazy to be in here with all the important people. Right? Awesome. Absolutely. You can head in and then just come on out and have a look at it. All right, thank you. Thank you for letting me take one, by the way. Not a problem, man. That's yeah, good. So it's obviously going to be a way for a paddle to shoot five inch, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to cheese it up. Basically, when they get ready to talk up there with the admirals and stuff, then is when you. No, I'm, I'm fairly <laughs> confident they're going to wait until after their ceremony or whatever is going on. You know? I'd be lying if I said I didn't try to bug out. Of course, this one's just playing a little harder now and again. You ought to take and get that video or that admiral or whatever. That way, you'll have it. Not everybody gets that tour here. Yeah. If you look in here, that was what they were planning on doing with the, or one of the thoughts of what they would do with the New Jersey afterwards. The aerial battleship? That battleship half character? Yep. Their aggressiveness and superior tactics. Yeah, she's not as pretty like that. I don't like it that way. I like her in the, the Black Dragon kind of. Yeah. 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 Mm, I'd still like that one better. But yeah, the carrier version, oh, I get it, but at the same time, totally screws up the lines of the ship. Much prefer. Yep. 
And now we're getting down into the Citadel, right? Yep, exactly. The place where all the important stuff is located. The stuff that you don't want to explode. This is where I would normally stop and talk about the armor thickness and whatnot. And you can see the inch and a half bottom deck and then the six inch deck and the splinter deck below it. What? You know all that already. All right, time to Citadel the New Jersey. It's going in. Oh, that's a drop. Watch your step, folks. Dad, especially watch your step down here. And your head. That's a step down. Or you just come over here. And this is the inside of the turret. This is so cool. So normally there's only two ways into the turret. Up through the gun house like we went earlier, and all the way to the bottom and back up the inside through a vertical ladder. Uh, so the museum cut a hole in the side of the barbette. We couldn't do that up on second deck because the armor is up to 17 inches thick there. When you come down here into the citadel, it's only three inches thick. So a piece of cake. Yeah, only only three inches. <laughs> we had to get permission from the uh, the Navy and also from the State Historic Preservation Officer to make a major alteration to the ship like that. And basically the, the response we got was, yeah, you can cut the hole. Uh, it has to be ADA compliant, which uh, is really weird because nothing else on the ship is. And because we're a historic structure, we're, we're grandfathered in, we don't have to cut away all of our watertight doors to make the ship ADA compliant. But anything new we add, stairs and uh, doors have to be up to modern standards, even though we're this deep into the ship. And we have to save the pieces we cut out so that if- They the can be patched back in. Exactly, exactly. So let's head in. That'd be historic if that ever happens. Yeah. Well, it's happened before. You never know. Unlikely, but. Yeah, it's been like 20 plus years since the last. Hell, basically 30 years. I'm trying to think. I can only do one instance. They're fake. The Navy has taken over a museum ship, and that was the uh, battleship Oregon in 1941. The uh, She was open, the, the Spanish American War era battleship was open as a museum in Oregon in 1920 or 24 and operated up until 41 and then the Navy came back and took her over uh, to scrap her. <laughs> Gotta have that metal. Yeah, but pre-Dreadnought Battleship she was completely obsolete by World War II so I, I don't know what the deal was there. But uh, ever since then I can't think of any instances of a museum ship being taken back over. Think of all the, uh, think of all the stuff that you could make out of the scraps of a battleship though. I mean, the steel or, you know, the uh, copper. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's all pre-nuclear too. So that's good. Speaking of which, did any of the Iowas actually carry nuclear ordnance? I know they developed them. I don't know if we ever actually carried them on a ship. So uh, they made modifications to do it. Missouri never got the modifications, but uh, New Jersey, Iowa, and Wisconsin did. 
And we know Wisconsin fired a dummy test round for the nuclear weapons right before she was decommissioned in round 58. But there's still debate as to whether they ever carried them or not. Um, I believe they did. They, they, there are spaces on the ship where you can look and see definite conversions that match up with the blueprints that they drew for Project Katy. Uh, so I think and, it, and it's not like they're going to be announcing to everybody, hey, we've got our nuclear shells on board this ship because, you know, it's so, so easy to identify an Iowa-class battleship, so. And, of course, a nuclear-armed battleship is named after my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think they would admit it at all. The no Navy ours. won't confirm that they ever put nuclear weapons on surface ships. Uh, so, like, even in the 80s, there, there were nuclear Tomahawk cruise missiles. And the Navy says, no, oh, no, 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 the Iron class battleships never had them. Well, the crew says they had two of the 32 missiles. And if you look at the launch consoles for the Tomahawks, there are two nuclear permission to fire key slots. And you don't necessarily see that on a regular Tomahawk cruise missile console. So it's likely. I, I believe that they carried nuclear warheads. They probably did. I'll, I'll go with what you said the crew said. They at least probably had, like, at least maybe two. Yeah. They had some on board for, for you know, in case All right, Wargaming, you heard it. I want, <laughs> I want my nuclear rounds from Iowa. So that's how every battle should end. Yeah. You fire a nuke and it destroys the whole map. Yeah. When, when you hear that message at the end of the... the one that's on the map. You, you hear the message at the end of the battle where your entire team has done nothing and died, you're one versus nine, and you get, your team depends on you, just nuke everything. I don't know how much <laughs> You know, they, this is the lightweight shell that the eye was carried. Yes, so the equivalent of a pie in the face. <laughs> the uh, deck in here, you can see it's segmented. This outer ring does not move at all. No not to the side of the ship. And this is the bearing? This ring rotates however the turret rotates. So if the turret turns 90 degrees, this goes with it and then it stays still. It has to 